Welcome to this lecture on uh, digital dis system design <coughs> in the course uh, digital system design with PLDs and FPGAs. Uh, in the last lecture we have looked at uh, what are the features of MILI and Moore output, um, uh, when can we use the MILI output and then we looked at uh, the, the state machine uh, controlling the data path uh, through clock gating and recirculating marks its advantages, disadvantages, how is the power dissipation and a solution for it and associated VHDL coding and so on. Uh, today we will address uh, some more issues uh, of the, the state machine. When you design uh, some things are related to kind of um, optimization which um, sometime the tool does not support or tool does not support uh, to a degree uh, where it can be kind of used. Um, you have to check whether your tool supports otherwise you can try to implement this uh, manually uh, which may be a little difficult in some cases but uh, at least uh, to be aware of uh, these issues will uh, will be useful uh, when you are kind of um, in a difficult situation. So, let us run through the, the slides of the last lecture before we get on to today's portion. So, let us move on to the slide and we have said that we have taken the example of our ADC uh, controller. Here in the Moore output when the start comes uh, the machine transit to a particular state S1 and this start of conversion was made 1 and then it is made 0. So, it is of 1 clock duration during S1 and since this is a function of the, the start signal what we try to do was that we try to convert that into a milli type of output and um, you know by making the SOC as a function of start then we say that in this particular state S0 SOC is 1 if start is 1 and when the start is 1 upon the next clock edge it is transited to the next uh, state S2 because S1 is not required just to kind of make it equal and uh, to compare that is why I called this S2 because calling this S1 will kind of make it uh, similar to that. And we have looked at the, the timing and we have found that uh, the for the Moore uh, kind of um, output the SOC comes during the state S1, but for milli it comes during S0 and also we find that one state is less. So, we said in, in general you have many outputs which are kind of milli outputs then maybe the number of states in the state diagram will be less. So, the state machine uh, area will be less and also the output comes earlier to the, the Moore in the case of milli. Uh, one other thing we have found the problem was that if this particular input is not synchronous then it can change any time and if it changes very close to the clock edge you get a glitch at the output and that can create problem and um, but um, that happens only when the, uh, the input is not synchronous and when the input is synchronous uh, we could happily use uh, these suppose in this case I we have showing the FSM two synchronous subsystem as I said it could be registers, counters and all working in the, uh, the same clock then some output is coming and we can now generate. Um, this particular output of the FSM as a function of the synchronous input. So, wherever you have synchronous input you can generate uh, the output as milli type output which will have a better timing uh, it comes earlier and um, it has number of states less and so on. And we have also seen how the state machine generates some enable signal in particular we have looked at the register how this latch signal enables uh, the latching the data from the input side. So, that is what we have shown we have a register and an FSM working at the same clock and this latch signal is decoded from a state which is controlling the register. So, when the latch is high and the clock comes the data gets latched and a possible implementation was this and we have found the problem with it that it has 
two kind of active edges come here. Uh, the first one may not meet the kind of uh, the timing requirement for the data. Second one could create timing problem and if this is used I said to clock a counter it might kind of count uh, twice and so on. And the solution is a recirculating MUX where we moved the large signal or enable signal in the data path and that works properly because uh, that is enabling the input to the uh, input of the register and neatly in the next clock edge it is large enough time is there. The only issue with this was that it is clocking all the time either it is connecting the input to the to the register or it is recirculating and that and this idea can be applied to kind of any number of inputs not only just enable. So, we are showing this as an enable of a counter when the enable is 1 um, uh, which has to be synchronous with the clock and then the counter is incremented and that is very useful kind of situation that we are keeping track of the state machine is keeping track of some event and event has happened and then we enable the event counter so that the counter can be incremented because say uh, we are working on some communication issue and we are counting the number of bits. So, when we have kind of done all the processing then we can increment the bit bit counter and so on. There are lot of application can be used and we have seen the corresponding code and we have also looked at we have been limited uh, to enable we have uh, another load signal then another MUX come which has priority. So, it comes close uh, to the to the D input of the, the flip flops. Um, so, then we have seen the equivalent code and we said that the problem with this um, recirculating MUX is that a lot of power dissipation and this uh, actually is much better in the power dissipation because only when it is uh, enable it, dissip it switches it dissipates power. The issue is that it, it has kind of two edges. So, if you move uh, this to the negative edge side then if you and it then you get a single pulse ok the, the correct location. So, so we decided to resynchronize this enable signal uh, with the negative edge of the clock then this will move here like that and if you and it you get a neat pulse and that is what we have done in the next scheme uh, here. So, the, the clock this is a negative edge triggered um, flip flop and the enable signal is given to that. So, it is resynchronized to negative edge clock 1 that is anded with the clock and that is used for uh, clocking the register. So, that is what is shown here. This was the original enable signal and it is given to the input of this D flip flop. So, since it is negative edge triggered at this edge this is latched. So, there is a TCQ delay it appears here and this edge. Uh, it is kind of uh, sorry the, this edge um, that is the 0 is transferred here. So, it, you get it here you and with the clock this clock 1 that is what we do and the clock 2 is a neat pass and a single pass you get. So, this is a um, kind of uh, clocking scheme for low power and as I said whether you write a VHDL code for this or VHDL code for this many a times can convert uh, this into kind of uh, this particular circuit at the, at the VHDL code level itself it can be you know converted. It is very easy to do that and uh, the tools uh, can do it automatically. So, uh, that is where we have uh, kind of stopped then the last lecture and let us move on with the some more issues of the, the state machine. And once again before going to that just a reminder uh, the state machine uh, structure is like this you have state flip flops keep track of the state. The output is a present state which is combined with the input and generate the next state which is latched on the next clock. So, this is kind of one path and the next path is that the present state along with the input is decoded for output. And if it is more output it is only present state which is decoded. If it is a melee output both input and the present state is decoded. And we said if you look at this logic and this logic both receive the present state and input 
and so we can combine this logic in one block only thing is that this output is shown from there. So that is what is shown here this logic comprises of next state logic and output logic the next state logic will give next state the output logic will give the output uh, both both are useful for analyzing um, the writing VHDL code and so on. So please keep both in your mind uh, the some textbook show this and some textbook in your basic courses show this does not matter but then it is better to keep both views in your mind. So let us uh, take up this issue the state diagram optimization. So when you um, uh, kind of come out with a control algorithm uh, like we have we have seen that you have a problem specification uh, then, then we said that um, you draw a waveform of the input and output and looking at the waveform you can write a verbal description of what we are intended to do many a times and that is algorithm you know formally put it uh, that is that verbal description can be turned into a proper algorithm with iteration and all that and you draw it and many a times it can be complex and at, at least at the first stage when you do that when um, the control algorithm is little elaborate complex and you draw the state diagram it may happen that there are identical states in different parts different parts means uh, assume that um, you are in a particular state depending on the input um, you branch to different uh, kind of uh, sections and do something okay. So there it may happen that in one state in one section um, uh, is similar to another state in another section and um, because it is many a times you draw it on a paper it is very difficult to kind of uh, uh, identify that both are kind of identical okay. So this the tool can do it tool can um, uh, detect the, uh, the kind of identical or we can even call equivalent you know identical is not a uh, good word technically but we can say equivalent states okay. Now the question arises uh, what are the equivalent states okay um, definitely um, from our your kind of experience with the state diagram we can say two states SI and SJ are equivalent at least we can say if they produces the same output okay. Uh, if it is more uh, then it just produces same output or we say if it is a milli kind of output then we say um, uh, two state for the same input condition produces the same output they are we cannot say they are equivalent at least they are half half the job is done with regard to output. Now we have to look at the transitions also okay. Now if you look at the transition there are two cases there could be two states which are transiting from the same previous state and there could be two states from which the transition occurs to the same next state okay. So for an equivalent state which one to consider is the question but it is very easy we know that the next state is a function of the present state okay. So if two states are has to be equivalent they should produce the same next state because next state is a function of the present state okay. So if two present state produces the same next state then uh, in the that next state Boolean equation this present state appears. So um, if they are identical I mean they the next state is identical then we can say these states are equivalent. So let us put whatever I have told formally um, so let us go to the slide. So we say uh, states SI and SJ are equivalent if for the same input condition both state transit to the same next states okay. Now when you when you when I say same next state. Um, SI and SJ can transit to SK under the same uh, input condition that means uh, like we discussed earlier there may be an input signal called start 
and SI and SJ will remain in their states when the start is low. When the start is high, SI transits to SK, SJ transits to SK. Say assume that these are different parts of the, the state diagram. Okay. Not that do not assume that both are kind of concurrently working. Um, when uh, the, the state machine in SI and the start comes it goes to SK. When the state machine is in SJ and the start comes it goes to SK. Okay. Now that is just the simple case maybe SI transit not only SJ uh, on some other input condition it might transit to sorry SI transit to SK in, on some condition SL in some other condition. So, SJ also should transit upon the same condition to SK and SL. So, all the transition all the input condition should match okay that is the uh, then we have to state the output for the same input condition both states produces the same output okay. Uh, for more output you can ignore uh, the input condition does not matter with the more output we do not uh, decode uh, the, the input. So, the only the present state matters. So, that is then we can say SI and SJ are equivalent that means for uh, both states transit to same uh, next state for the same condition. Okay. All the transition all the condition should match these two should produce the same output um, for uh, exactly same for the same input condition with Millet with Moore just same output then SI and SJ are equivalent then we can replace SJ with SI you know that 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 is a game you know that is simply uh, wherever SJ is there rub it off and uh, uh, you know uh, bring those uh, you know arrows trans, you know whichever was going from SJ anyway it goes from SI and the output also is taken care there is no, no problem uh, it works uh, properly ok. So, that is how so if SI and SJ are equivalent one is redundant you can remove it and the rule is applicable to more than two states when we formally states we say about two states but then it is it is easy to kind of formally state it. But um, if three states uh, can be identical under the same kind of condition now how to detect this now that the question is that fine we, we say um, like in a state diagram um, like it, 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 it you know that if there are 32 states uh, spread across an A3 sheet ok you have drawn in a big sheet and how do you look you know you put the finger on one state and keep the other finger on all the other state and looking for and you have to do all the combinations it is a very laborious uh, job. So, on a state diagram it is very difficult to do that even if you kind of um, that does not help a computer algorithm because ultimately if you want to do that in a tool we have to formally state the algorithm. So, which is the best place to look. So, we know that the first one talks about the next state. So, the ideal place to look for that is in the next state table ok. So, what are we looking what we are looking um, the for two states at least let us take two states the two state for the same input condition produces the same output condition. So, you go to next state table pick up the rows ok and wherever you find there are same next state and same input condition and uh, you pick up the, the present state they, they are kind of the ideal candidates as far as the next state is concerned. So, that is what I state here the first condition can be detected by examining the rows identical rows except the present state because the next state is same and the input conditions are same. So, you pick up all that then uh, you get the, the candidate uh, for the present state because we have to now detect uh, whether the check whether the output is uh, same and that can be easily detected in the output logic uh, table output table. So, the second condition can be detected by examining the rows identical rows except the present state. So, you leave the present state look at the outputs if outputs are same and the input conditions are same then 
um, you can kind of um, uh, for more output you can just look for the identical output then uh, you know then uh, you can pick up those states ok. Now there are we have to kind of make an intersection of uh, two states because this at the end of it you get uh, you know uh, some states uh, if you look at it you get some state and both should be anded or intersected um, then um, uh, then you get the, the correct thing. So, this can be systematically done in an algorithm. So, let us state that. So, in the next state table look for the same next state you know you look where all uh, the next states are similar then out of this next state select the state which have the input condition same. So, if you state an algorithm look for the next state which are all similar pick up all that look at the input condition wherever out of this input conditions are same uh, then you pick up the present state then go um, uh, then go to the uh, um, the output table check if the outputs are same for this next state. So, wherever the outputs are same pick up those states and then we have for Millet you have to look for the inputs also you know you have to match the input for more you match the output then these states uh, where the outputs are same they are equivalent you know. So, systematically you can do that. Um, so, the tools can do that you know first look for uh, the identical next state uh, then go for uh, look at in these states uh, the inputs uh, condition the next state table if they are identical pick up those go to the output um, kind of output table check for these states where the outputs and input conditions are same those states will be the equivalent ones and you can remove uh, keep one and remove uh, all the rest then uh, the state diagram is optimized. You have to check whether your tool does it maybe when we come to the tool uh, we cannot I am waiting for some more portions to be covered so that we can introduce the tool so that once for all we can try quite a few things um, um, also the you know that the tools are changing all the time. So, I, I mean that part of uh, the lecture may be less useful because uh, after few years if at all this course is used by someone then the tool part is kind of there is no guarantee that uh, you know it makes sense because uh, by then the whole interface and uh, everything would have changed. So, people will have still is useful to see the, the design methodology the steps and the output and same. So, I am hoping that will be useful but I am delaying it so that we pick up maximum uh, information input uh, so that you understand everything when I demonstrate uh, the tools boards and things like that ok. So, let us move on to another issue this we talked about the state diagram optimization we have in a state diagram how to identify um, two or more states are identical so that we can optimize the state diagram we can uh, kind of uh, remove the redundant state and keep uh, the, the a minimal state diagram so that the area occupied by the finite state machine is less that is our aim. So, let us move on to another issue which is called output racing or uh, uh, output glitches or whatever. So, uh, forget about the name. So, let us look at the issue ok. So, take a state machine with um, 3 flip flops ok. So, let us call it the MSP Q2, Q1 and Q0. So, I am just showing a part of a state diagram. So, there assume there is a big uh, state diagram which um, kind of at least it has um, more than 4 states we do not know whether it occupies 8 states, but more than 4 states which force us to use 3 flip flop to implement it and there are we call it Q2, Q1 and Q0 ok. Assume there is a transition from 001 to 010 ok. So, in this when the clock and there is no input condition may be a clock comes this transit to this. So, Q1 is going Q0 is going from 1 to 0 and Q1 is going from 0 to 1 ok. Now, assume that see we have 3 flip flops and all may not 
B kind of uh, has the same propagation delay assume that the Q1 is faster than Q0 that means TCQ0 is less than TCQ1 okay the propagation delay of the uh, the the first flip flop is less okay sorry the, the first flip flop TCQ1 is less than TCQ0 or TCQ0 is greater than TCQ1. So what happens is that you see that it was 0, 0, 1 if this is faster this 0 will become 1 before this 1 becomes 0 then ultimately 1 will move to 0 because the Q0 will change state after a while. So what happens is that in between uh, while changing the state from 0, 0, 1 to 0, 1, 0 for brief period a transitory state will come which is 0, 1, 1. So that is what is shown in the picture uh, I have shown in the picture I am say, saying that the propagation delay of Q0 is slower I mean it is larger than TCQ1 or the Q1 is faster. So Q1 becomes 1 and for some time Q0 remain 1 then transit to 0. So 0, 0, 1 becomes 0, 1, 1 and ultimately it becomes 0, 1, 0 very very brief period it becomes you know. Uh, and it happens you know that it is because uh, you know do not worry about it we talked about in combination circuit when there are multiple output there is difference in the path delay it happens. So similarly when there are multiple flip flops uh, because of the variation in the propagation delay of the, uh, the TC flip flop this happens and it is very natural okay there is nothing wrong with this. Now you can take the other condition if Q0 is faster than Q1 so take the other condition Q0 is faster than Q1 means this 1 will become 0 before this 0 becomes 1. So you will get a situation where for a brief period you have all 0, 0, 0 then it transit to 0, 0, 1. So you have the other condition uh, the, the Q0 is faster so 1 becomes 0 then the Q1 change state 0, 1, 0. So um, either of this condition if the delay does not match exactly one is greater than the other um, there are two conditions there could be a transitory state 0, 0, 0 or 0, 1, 1 and the fact is that we do not know whether these are kind of valid state maybe this is part of uh, the state diagram some other state. So you might ask the question to ask is that um, is there any concern to worry about okay does not matter for a brief period um, let this happen it is only for a uh, very few maybe say 2 percent of the time or 1 percent of the time it just you know transit it does not like it settles anyway okay. Um, it looks little innocuous but assume that these states produce some output okay because this could be valid state in the state diagram or a part of our control uh, algorithm assume that there are two outputs called enable and write and that is one in this state which is valid. So what happens is that when the clock comes and the present state changes from 0, 0, 1 to 0, 1, 0, 1, 0 these outputs will briefly go active okay. So you see such a situation the, the here the state machine in this state the clock comes so for a and ultimately this the state here is 0 before was 0, 0, 1 and here it is 0, 1, 0 but brief in between it may go through 0, 0, 0 or 0, 1, 1. So if it goes through 0, 0 uh, you get a right pause briefly going high a glitch and an enable pause which is briefly going high if it happens this way okay. Now once again is that a cause for a concern you know is that create uh, uh, some problem. Now it depends how this particular output is used if this is used uh, like to enable a counter we know that it does not matter because we know that when you enable something uh, using clock gating or recirculating marks 
nothing is going to happen because we see unless they enable stretches all over here then only this clock will kind of become active enable the recirculating mux. So, it may not in a synchronous case it may not kind of create problem, but we do not know how this is used maybe this is used asynchronously to increment a counter or this write is going to an asynchronous memory as a write pulse then what happens that for a brief duration the write pulse go high and if the access time is enough uh, maybe the address line is floating or uh, some value is there data line is uh, floating, but then something get latched into some address and uh, which can corrupt some location ok. So, depending on uh, like uh, how fast is the memory, how fast, how uh, you know short is the access time and so on. So, this could um, create problem. Uh, so, that you should keep in mind because this is called output racing because these two outputs to q1 and q0 is racing each other and one is faster than the other that can produce uh, briefly the transitory state it can produce output this may or may not cause problem and when there are critical applications we have to worry about it like you are making a kind of medical equipment um, which is uh, used for some kind of radiation and you are designing a controller for it you have to be very careful you know, but if you are doing something very not that kind of um, uh, where such a critical application is not there it may not matter you know it is some user intervention user is pressing a key uh, if it is not detected maybe the user can press it again may not matter. So, it depends on the application uh, uh, the criticality of the application you have to break your head about it ok. Always uh, when you are uh, designing something um, maybe you are uh, in a huge team ok. You are doing a part of the design maybe you are doing front end design you are uh, uh, doing the back end design and you do not know like some people sometime you do the back end design of uh, kind of verification and if you ask what is this used for they may not be even aware which chip they are working on or they vaguely know and they may not even know which is the application it is very kind of very bad situation you if you are working on a design um, on a big team you should know what are you working and what application it is used. So, that you can kind of judiciously um, you know choose uh, the design practices uh, you know which is um, how the reliability cost flexibility all that can be balanced properly depending on the application very, very very important like you are sending something to the space you know and a space vehicle is being controlled it is very critical nothing can be corrected on the way sometime from the ground. So, you have to make it very critical. So, it depends where you are or, or, or on an aircraft you have to be very careful. So, uh, let us uh, go ahead. So, this is what uh, I have stated um, uh, earlier. Now, uh, the question is that what is the solution? Uh, now, there is fine. Uh, there is an output race what is the solution ok. Now, when you have a problem ok, when um, you have such a problem and when you in general ok. Maybe you are used to always uh, learning from the textbook there is some problem the textbook tell you some answers. But mind you these textbooks get the answer from uh, the research somebody has done you know at the beginning uh, when somebody has proposed a state machine uh, Moore or Millet uh, all these issues would not have been thought about you know that uh, implementation kind of detail. But when you have a problem you should know to solve it in the first place you should know what caused the problem ok. Then you can attack find a solution say I have heard of a story uh, there is a there was a highway and there was a sharp turn in the highway ok. Uh, you know uh, the highway is a very uh, you know high speed um, highway is there where the, the, the vehicles are going at very high speed above say 100 kilometer per hour and there is a sharp 90 degree turn for whatever reason uh, there is a turn and at night there used to be lot of accidents and uh, the residents are kind of worked out I know they have to call the ambulance service the police and so on. So, the residents decided to do something about it and they have um, met together and somebody suggested that 
uh, let us station an ambulance you know at the turning so that when the accidents happen people can be picked up and everybody like the idea you know it's a great thing because whenever the problem happens they used to call an ambulance so if the ambulance is uh, ready nearby this can be attended to okay so everyone agreed and they were going for kind of one collection to buy the ambulance and some wise men said see the problem has occurred because there is a sharp turn in the highway the to solve you have to straighten the turn you know reduce the sharp turn make it smooth then there will be less problem you know and everyone agreed when about doing that so similarly when you have a problem always think what caused the problem there could be a at least some some solution to it and let us see here in the output race um, what caused the problem what caused the problem is that we can say that there are there is a like it looks like that there is a discrepancy among the delay uh, uh, you know in the in the uh, in the flip flop uh, there is a, a kind of variation in the propagation delay okay now uh, if you once again and this is not in our control i mean you fabricate it and everybody fabricate try to fabricate it on the same die very close together but yet when you do the processing the like electro chemical processing there could be a kind of variation uh, but if you think again deeply you see the problem has come because there are two flip flops changing the state that is why the variation in delay is affecting suppose the state assignment was 001 to 011 so one is not changing only the q1 was changing the state so it shows that if the state transition can be logically adjacent okay or you say sometime the gray coding if the adjacent states like when a state transit from uh, one state to another if those states are logically adjacent they change only by one bit then this problem would in arise so at least um, like from working out from the fundamental cause we can say the solution is that do state assignment such that more than one flip flop doesn't change output okay well and well and it is it is good you know it it works at least in simple cases you have a state a transit to next state then a transit to next state and so on it comes back then you can do say 000 001 011 you know the gray code and you can do that okay but what about all kinds of transition you have a state then it transit to three state from there it goes in a loop from here it comes back to something it may not be able to do the you know logically adjacent coding in all cases and you take a simple case you have one state here it transit to next state it transit to another state and come back so three states are adjacent to each other you cannot do a gray coding you know because if you remember the the karnoff map where we do the logical adjacency for karnoff map we know that the three states cannot be logically adjacent to each other four states can be okay maybe you will say you insert one dummy state in between which does nothing it can be done but then in a complex uh, state diagram and you find there are a lot of uh, you know kind of adjacency problem you introduce dummy state and it becomes equivalent i mean complex and a uh, lot of area is wasted on that and uh, that's not very uh, bright solution so if this is possible if gray code is possible do that okay it may not be possible and then what we do is that maybe we can say uh, another issue in the in the in the original diagram is that it is because it is producing output maybe uh, there are some transitory state which doesn't produce or doesn't change the output uh, then do that uh, the state assignment such a way but very uh, if if a, a state doesn't produce any different output what is the use of such a state so though it looks very sound very nicely some solution sound very nicely but it may not make much sense you know uh, uh, many a times when people talk uh the what they talk uh, sound very good but it may not be practically as no relevant so you have to be very careful when you make statement so this statement sound good but practically it doesn't happen if there is a transitory state uh, which produces the output 
same as before or same as after uh, then you may ask what is it doing okay. Uh, it may not do any, any useful purposes. Suppose now assume that you cannot do anything what is the solution. Now you are stuck with this problem you have a glitch okay then and that creates some problem and you want to solve it what is the solution. So now then let us look at uh, the ideal again what we look at is that how does a good output looks like. If enable is a valid output it would have started from here it would have gone all the way up to here. This is a transitory output so it appears as a glitch okay. If it is a valid output it extends all the way at least for one clock period. So why not we put at the output logic one flip flop and give a clock to it so that this if valid output is registered and get a registered output this glitch won't be registered because it appears briefly for a for a short duration. So that is the kind of the most um, kind of um, permanent solution you output the re register the output you know and the outputs are registered on the next clock edge well after the state, state change but the output will appear after one clock period okay. So that is what I have shown here what we do is that uh, you have the output logic uh, you put a suppose there are 3 output put 3 flip flops for 3 output uh, give the same clock and the reset and this is the registered output earlier we used to take the output here. Now you look at it suppose uh, we have an enable output which is glitching okay and um, which is coming here there is a load output which is a valid output um, and then you see the difference like uh, since when the clock comes in this clock edge nothing happens enable is not high. In the next clock edge when the clock comes here that this glitch would have disappeared so the enable registered remains 0 throughout all the, all the time. But if it is a valid output which starts at this point goes all the way to the next clock period at least this is the worst case one clock period it can remain high does not matter. Uh, so in the worst in the, in the critical case it remains there for one clock period but when this clock edge comes it is high so the registered version of that output uh, comes at the output with a one clock cycle delay. So that means that all the glitches go off but all the outputs kind of lag by one clock cycle uh, uh, you know f I mean lag with respect to the state change okay. But it is it's, it's a less of a problem you know that uh, uh, in the state diagram uh, we come to the starting state when it, when it starts iterating or start initializing everything is delayed by one clock period as far as this particular output is concerned not a problem not a very serious problem uh, but you should keep that in mind you know uh, uh, you know there can be side effect if you do not remember that you know uh, that little care has to be taken with respect to the timing you have to analyze the timing uh, what happens because uh, you see that uh, this output is going to the data path and data path is giving some input and this latency can reflect some time. Uh, uh, in the in the control algorithm. So, you have to, to take care you have to think uh, do not take things just because you state you know solution is there you put the output register and you know assume that everything works you please analyze the timing there you can think of situation where this makes a difference uh, to the control algorithm something need to be tweaked for proper work you have to you have to keep that in mind you know. If you are clever you can find a solution maybe you can uh, uh, solve a very critical problem if you understand the issue. But now look at it you know that that is a permanent solution for output racing or output glitch. But one thing I want to uh, kind of bring out from this diagram the earlier we said that this output logic and the next state logic gets a input the same input you know the present state is here and input here. The real inputs from the data path is, is input to this stage input to this stage and we combine 
this stage here. So, now if you look at this diagram see this stage and this two stage look identical. So, if you can take this output logic put it here and call logic. Now, that uh, the this flip flops and this flip flops are same you know you get uh, the clock and asynchronous reset same. So, we can combine this here only thing is that that combines output registering as well as uh, the state flip flops. So, that is what is shown here. Now, the out with the output registering um, the, the, the diagram looks much more simplified you have a set of flip flops which combines a state variable that means if there are uh, 5 state there are 3 flip flops there are 3 for the state variables q2, q1, q0. There are 3 outputs then there are 3 flip flops for output and this is the logic which one part is the next state logic which decode the present state and the input and decide the next state which goes to the state flip flops. And there is output logic which look at the present state and input produce the output which goes to 3 flip flops to register the output and that comes here out of the flip flops come the present state and the registered output. But one thing you should remember that one good thing uh, happens here we said that a set of registers with respect to the uh, with a preceding logic can be coded in a single process. So, though it looks very kind of complex with 4 blocks when it comes to VHDL coding we can write a single process to implement this state machine ok. Whether the tool detects it we have to check it, but at least from what we have learned it is a very nice thing you can write a single process and we will see that maybe in the next I realize, realize that maybe it is wise to uh, discuss the VHDL coding of the state machine soon before we go ahead. Maybe in the next lecture we look at it how to what are the possible ways of doing the VHDL coding and this is very easy like you write a process uh, to, to code this register along with the next state logic and output logic. So, it is a very simplified coding and you want to, to generate a state machine with the registered output the VHDL coding is very very easy uh, just put the state diagram and start writing the code you will get it. So, that is what we have discussed now the output registering uh, wherein uh, when there are multiple flip flops change state um, uh, at this in the, in the same transition then due to mismatch of variation in the propagation delay of the, the flip flops uh, there could be transitory state which can produce output you know glitches and depending on how these outputs are used this can create problem in the uh, in our circuit and to solve we said the problem because of the discrepancy or multiple flip flops changing state. So, gray coding is solution and the ideal solution is to register the output in the next clock edge. So, that this glitches disappear the valid ones come with a latency of one clock period and we have seen that when we uh, kind of do a little re work on that structure you get a nice structure which can be uh, the VHDL coding of that becomes very easy ok. So, let us move forward uh, to another issue uh, that is uh, the selection of flip flops ok. Now, in all our discussion to make uh, things easy we assume that uh, we are we are going to use uh, the D flip flops all the time we said fine I mean the assumption was that we use the D flip flops, but you could use uh, let us come to this you could use uh, other flip flops like J K or toggle flip flops and so on. And let us take this transition the present state to the next state ok. So, uh, like there are these are the possible transition 0, 0 to 0, 0 to 1. 1 to 0 and 1 to 1 ok. Now, in the state machine if you are using D flip flop ok the sequential circuit use D flip flop to implement the state machine. Then we know that it is very easy uh, the input to the D should be same as next state you know it is very easy like uh, we do not care what was the present state if the next state is 0 the D has to be 0. 
next state is 1 d has to be 1 ok. But instead of d flip flop if you are using a jk flip flop ok then uh, that means uh, like in, in the state machine like what I am talking is that this particular flip flop instead of d if you use jk then you have a j and k then you should know that for each like earlier we had d1 say d2 d1 d0 coming out of the next state logic but you have now so j2 k2 j1 k1 j0 k0. So in the next state logic we will add twice the output uh, for the jk flip flop ok. So if that happens if you are using jk flip flop here then the, the, the condition for that to decide when you work out the next state table it will be like that. If the present state is 0 next state is 0 then we should disable the set so j has to be 0 and k is do not care it does not matter ok. Uh, k can be 1 then it is reset you know the next state uh, is reset it does not matter. If 0 to 1 uh, j has to be 1 it is a set operation kind of j is 1 and k can be 0 I mean k can be do not care if k is 0 it is a set operation k is 1 then it is a toggle operation it does not matter whether it is 0 to 1 can be a set or a toggle. Similarly 1 to 0 k has to be 1 it is a reset operation and j is do not care if j is 0 it is reset j is 1 it is a toggle because 1 to 0 it toggles. 1 to 1 then uh, that it should not be kind of reset so k has to be 0 j is do not care if it is 0 0 no setting if it is j is 1 then it is a setting operation does not matter. So that is what is uh, the transition table for the jk and if it is a toggle flip flop then uh, then you know that 0 to 0 it should not toggle so toggle is 0, 0 to 1 it has to toggle 1, 1 to 0 uh, then toggle is 1, 1 to 1 it is 0. So toggle flip flop by which I mean uh, there is an input called toggle and if it is 0 the output will not toggle if it is 1 the output will toggle that is meaning of it. But looks like uh, in the case of jk uh, the next state logic will have to produce twice the output uh, with respect to d flip flop. So you will find that internal to the next state logic there will be um, a some logic for j2 some for k2 some for j1 some for k1 and things like that and um, at least for a novice it might looks like the next state logic in the case of jk uh, could be kind of little complex than the d or t. But mind you you have don ks in k and j in the case of jk. So that could kind of minimize the next state logic uh, area we are not able to say that. So though the jk case is different from d you have the twice the number of output with respect to next state logic because of the do not care the area of the next state logic can be less than in the case of d and t you know that you should keep in mind. Uh, and uh, when it comes to the FPGA uh, normally you get uh, d or t flip flops ok. Uh, jk flip flops are not there um, I am not very I do not remember now at least in CPLD you have an option of d and t not because that uh, the in the state machine uh, this is useful but for counters you know that the counter has toggling action like uh, uh, like at least the binary counter you know that it counts very sequentially um, uh, 0 0 0 0 1 0 0 1 0 1 1 then the next bit is toggle you know. So the toggle flip flops owing to the uh, the counter kind of sequence the binary sequence uh, this is useful in the counting application. So the CPLDs and FPGA as flip flop which can be used for uh, the counting uh, and wherever there is toggling application. So maybe we have uh, less time left for the next uh, kind of um, issue to be taken. So essentially we have looked at uh, the three issues today. Uh, one was um, uh, the basically uh, we have looked at uh, the state diagram optimization and wherein we said that uh, basically the issue is 
uh, to find identical state and that is identical if both producers the same output for the same input condition and they transit to same next state for the identical condition all the number of uh, transition and number of next state should match then they are identical we have discussed how to uh, kind of identify this from the next state table and output table and somewhat formal steps we have stated but it can be converted into a algorithm suitable for uh, kind of software can be implemented some tools implement that you can check whether your tool implements it and then we looked at the output racing and we have said the gray coding is a solution output registering is a solution then we have looked at the, the selection of flip flops and uh, you can use D flip flop, T flip flops or JK flip flops. In the case of JK flip flop the next state logic has to produce twice the number of output but then um, because of the down chaos the area can be less but practically uh, the FPGAs and CPLDs does not have JK flip flops mostly it has D and T flip flops. Once again T flip flops are given for kind of binary counting could be useful in the case of uh, the state machine. Uh, the again um, there are ways uh, the tools can choose uh, the ideal uh, type of flip flop or you can um, kind of tell the tool to choose a particular flip flop if you are if you are sure of um, uh, the kind of um, some kind of advantage you get out of that. So maybe in the next lecture we will go look at the VHDL coding of the state machine. Uh, since the state machine is an important part uh, we will look at it not that we have learned all what is required but formally uh, putting it together some kind of um, uh, something specific to state machine coding can be discussed there. So please revise what we have uh, looked at it uh, go through the timing work out uh, uh, some make some practical cases think of uh, when this is applied to the practical cases what are the kind of side effects it produces try to solve it or if you have done similar work uh, you think you connect uh, with these lectures uh, those who are working in the industry you can kind of relate to what you have experienced what you have done in a, in a project or in a, in a um, work you are doing now. So please revise it and uh, I stop here I wish you all the best and thank you.